All right, welcome back. Today's lesson is called Pascal's Triangle. And if I had to say this, this is one of the most fascinating tricks ever introduced in algebra. This thing is phenomenal. It will save you so much time. And I wish, I wish someone had shown me this in high school because I had no clue that this even, even was useful until I got to college. And my professor showed me this thing and I thought, where did this come from? Why didn't someone show me this sooner? Because this will save you tons and tons of time. And I told you guys that everything you've learned in this class is one of the most fascinating things we've looked at so far. Everything you've learned in this class is going to come back into one lesson, or nearly everything, excluding maybe topic of normal distribution, but absolute value equations, permutation combinations, simplifying expressions. Everything you've learned in this class is going to come right back into one lesson. I think this starts to get that point across a little bit. This is very fascinating. So if we look at quantity x plus y to the third power, so just looking at this right here, this is a monstrous problem. My question is, do we cube... Do we simply cube the x and cube the y? Is this x cubed plus y cubed? Do exponents distribute over addition? Hopefully you say at this point after we've simplified, absolutely not. This is the worst mistake you can make in Algebra 2. Remember, exponents distribute over the operation multiplication. Now this is technically not distributive property, but I use the word distribute. So we say what? We say that this is x cubed, y cubed, y, because the operation is multiplication. So x times y to the third power is x cubed times y cubed. However, x plus y to the third power is what? Well, let me say it like this. Maybe this makes it more clear. If I say xy to the third power, this is xy times xy times xy. We write it three times. And since it's all multiplication, we end up with x cubed, y cubed. However, if I say x plus y to the third, you see multiplication rules. Multiplication rules meaning addition. So we end up with x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. And when multiplication meets addition, what property applies? This is distributive property. This is the true distributive property. So again, we take the binomial and, and we distribute and etc. etc. So let's look at this problem and see, okay, so x plus y cubed is a little bit of a, of a, a little bit of some work. So x plus y to the third is equal to what? x plus y multiplied by x plus y multiplied by x plus y. And so, okay, distributive property, but we learned a trick. The trick is to simply FOIL. So we're going to ignore the third one. Just focus on the first two. Take the x and multiply by both. x times x is x squared. x times y is xy. And now y times x, y times x, put it in alphabetical order, this is xy, and y times y is y squared. Now don't ignore, don't ignore what's on the end, put parentheses around this, this is what, x plus y. On the end, we have to do some more work. So now we're done multiplying, now what are we doing? Adding. When we add, something must match. So we have xy matching xy, we have what? x squared plus 2xy, what matches doesn't change, the xy does not change, plus y squared multiplied by quantity what? x plus y. Now, we're not done, so we have to FOIL again. So take the x squared, multiply by both. x squared times x is what? x to the third. x squared times y is x squared y. And now take the 2xy, multiply by both. 2xy times x is 2x squared y. 2xy times y is 2xy squared. And now take the y squared, multiply by both. y squared times x is what? plus xy squared, and now the y squared times the y is y to the third. And now we're done multiplying, now we are adding again, so nothing matches x cubed, we write x cubed, cross it out. Does anything match x squared y? Yes, what matches doesn't change, the x squared y does not change, we add what's in front, one plus two is three x squared y, cross these out. Does anything match your xy squared? Yes. Okay, so the xy squared does not change because we're adding, Okay, and we add 2 plus 1 gives 3xy squared, and then what? On the end, we have a plus y cubed, and you have successfully simplified. But how much work did this take? You look at this little problem. This thing is a little monster. Okay, this is a little monster. So I always tell students, this thing is not, this thing, if looking at this problem, you start to realize, wow, that's a lot of work. But believe it or not, this problem can be done in your head. You guys should be able to look. You guys should be able to, I'm not, I'm not going to erase the answer, but I'm going to erase the work. You can always rewind the video if you need to relook at that. But I'm just going to erase this work. 
and I'm just going to show you. Looking at x plus y cubed, you can simply do this in your head. You can say, well, this is x to the third plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y to the third. And if you want to know how to do this in your head, I'm going to show you right now. You can do this work in your head using the trick called Pascal's triangle. Let me grab another marker because this marker is going out. All right, so this is the triangle. Very interesting. So let's go and see. Pascal's triangle. All right, Pascal's triangle starts, it's very interesting, starts with 1. Okay, and then what do we write? Well, let's go ahead and see if you can find the pattern. 1, 1. Okay, now what? We're going to have 1, 2, 1. One, writing the two between the ones. Now let's do this again. I'm um, gonna run out of space. Let me here. We'll have to do this here. Here's one. And we have one, one. We have one, two, one. Can you find the pattern? Watch this. One, three, three, one. What happened? Guys, what's one plus two? One plus two is three. What's 2 plus 1? 2 plus 1 is 3. Can you guess the next row? Always starts with a 1. And what's 3 plus 1? 3 plus 1 is 4. What's 3 plus 3? 3 plus 3 is 6. What's 3 plus 1? 3 plus 1 is 4. And put a 1 on the end. Watch this. 1. 1 plus 4 is what? 1 plus 4 is 5. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 plus 4 is 10. 4 plus 1 is 5, and we have a 1 on the end, and so on and so forth. This pattern continues. The triangle never ends. We say that this up here is x plus y to the 0 power. This is x plus y to the first power. This is x plus y to the second power. This is quantity x plus y to the third power. Running out of space. This is quantity x plus y to the fourth power, and down here this row, I'm just going to write it as I don't have space, quantity x plus y to the fifth power, and watch how this works. So it's very, very, very interesting. We can do this problem, check this out, we can do this problem using Pascal's triangle. Now, we have the problem in front of us, I'm not going to erase, well, let me put this answer down here again. Uh, well, let's leave the answer here. Okay, so we know what the correct answer is. Go ahead and write, this is the correct answer. Why do we know this is the correct answer? Because we simplified, we foiled. Now watch this. We can take quantity x plus y to the third, and this is the trick. It always goes descending order of degree for x and ascending order of degree for y. Watch this. So we start with x to what power? We start with x to the third. Now go all the way down to 0. x squared, all the way down to 0. x to the first, and x to the 0. Now, we're going to start with y. We're going to do this backwards for our y term. So always start with your first term, x. Do x to the third, x squared, x to the first, and x to the 0. All the way down to 0. Now take your y term. We're going to do this backwards for the y. So we're going to start at 0 and go up to what? Go up to 3. So we're going to now do y to the 0 y to the first, we don't have to write the 1, just y, then y squared, and then y to the third. And now look, what row is this in Pascal's triangle? Look at the row, x plus y cubed, I'm circling the row, x plus y cubed, circling the row, what is this? These are the coefficients that go in front of your variable terms, watch this. So we're going to put a 1, then a 3, then a 3, then a 1, put them in. So we're going to put a 1, 3, 3 and a 1. And this is the answer. Look at this and look at this. We have 1, 3, 3, 1. Check this out. Now, what is y to the 0? y to the 0 is just what? y to the 0 is just 1. y to the 0 is 1. So we can ignore the 1. We can also ignore this 1. <coughs> so anytime you see a 1, a 1 or a y to the 0, <coughs> it can be ignored. So we just have what? x to the 3rd. We're done with this term. Plus... 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus, and what is this? The ones can be ignored, and we just have plus y to the third. And notice, 
We are done. So this trick actually will find the answer to this problem very, very quickly using the rows and the triangles. So let's try another one. Check this out. We're going to start simple with this lesson. In the next lesson, I'll show you a little bit more involved examples. But these examples are very basic. So let's look at this. But the triangle works for any type of binomial expansion. Now, this leads us into something called the binomial expansion theorem. I'm not going to get into this, but let's look at quantity x plus y to the fourth power. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we look at what row are we in in Pascal's triangle. What row are we in? Well, we're in the fourth row. Okay, so we're going to start with, well, we're going to start with the x plus y quantity to the fourth. We're going to start with our variables. Start with x. The first variable is x, so we're going to start with the largest degree of x. Since this is fourth degree, we're going to say x to the fourth and go all the way down to zero. So we have x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and x to the zero. Now, for your y term, the second term, you're going to go backwards. You're going to start at zero and go all the way up to the largest degree of four. So we're going to start at y to the zero, then y to the first, then y squared, y to the third, and y to the fourth. Now what we're going to do is put our coefficients in. What are the coefficients? The coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So in front we're going to put what? We're going to put a 1, then a 4, then a 6, then a 4, then a 1. And now we have our answer. We just have to get this into a form that looks pretty. So we're going to say 1 can be ignored. y to the 0 is also 1. It can be ignored. So we have x to the fourth. Okay, cross this term out. And this is a positive 4, so plus 4x to the third y. Cross this term out. And this is a positive 6, so plus 6x squared y squared. And cross this term out, plus 4xy cubed. Cross this term out. And the 1 and the x to the 0, which is also a representation of 1, can be ignored. So we have plus y to the fourth. And we are done. So we simply expanded this binomial. Would you want to do this work? x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. Would you want to foil this, foil this, and then foil the results? No, that would be a lot of work. But look at Pascal's triangle. Pascal's triangle gets this answer very, very, very quickly. So if you want to verify that this is correct, you can simply foil all four of these, and you can verify that this is the correct answer. So yes, we've arrived at an answer very quickly with Pascal's triangle. Now. For your homework, I assigned for the homework, your homework is to draw the triangle. Draw the triangle. Now, it's shown in the beginning of the video, so obviously, and it's written right here, but draw the triangle out to seven rows. I'm sorry, make that eight rows. Draw the triangle out to eight rows. So we have row one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to go three more rows. So draw the triangle out to eight rows and expand the binomial x plus y to the fifth power. So you guys have to expand this binomial x plus y to the fifth. And I've shown you it will start with it will start with x to the fifth and it will go all the way down to x to the zero. So you'll have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x and x to the zero. And your y will go backwards. So you'll start with starting at 0 for y. You'll have y to the 0, y to the 1st, y squared, y cubed, y to the 4th, and y to the 5th, etc. Put your coefficients in. You'll be good. Now, what's interesting about this triangle, remember permutation and combination. You guys remember permutation and combination. Hopefully you say yes. I remember, I remember dealing with formulas with permutation and combination. Believe it or not, what are you looking at in this triangle? You're looking at permutation combination. Let me show you. So we're going to say, first off, permutation and combination are almost directly, almost exactly the same thing. Very, very similar. But we're going to look at combination 5 choose 0. Let's calculate this. Combination 5 choose 0. So combination, combination 5 choose 0 says what? We start with the 5. This is 5 factorial over what? 5 factorial over 0 factorial multiplied by subtract the 2. 5 minus 0 is what? 5. So we get 5 factorial. Remember that 0 factorial... 0 factorial is equal to 1, so we end up with 5 factorial over, and what is 1 times 5 factorial? 1 times 5 factorial is just 5 factorial, so we end up with what? 120 over 120, which is equal to 1. Now, let's do combination 5 choose 1. Combination 5 choose 1, this is completely fascinating. 5 factorial over, what is this? 1 factorial multiplied by, now subtract the 2. Subtract the 2. 5 minus 1 is... 
four factorial. If you're struggling with this, there's a permutation combination video. You can go back to the first permutation combination video and look at these formulas, how these are developed if you're forgetting this. So we have what? Five factorial on top. What is five factorial? Five factorial is memorized to be 120. And what is four factorial? And what is one factorial? Well, one factorial is one, and four factorial is 24. One times 24 is 24, and 120 divided by 24 is five. Now, combination five choose three. What is combination five choose three? So we have what? Five factorial over, what is this? Three factorial multiplied by, now subtract the two. Five minus three is two factorial. So we end up with five factorial, which is 120 divided by, what is three factorial? Hopefully you remember that three factorial means three times two times one, which is six. Two factorial means two times one, which is two, and six times two is 12. What is 120 divided by 12? Well, 120 divided by 12 is 10. Look at these numbers, and look at these numbers. Very interesting. So we're going to look at this one. This one is combination 5 choose 0. Combination 5 choose 0 is what? 1. What is this number? This is combination 5 choose 1. So what is this? Combination 5 choose 1 is 5. Check this out. Combination what? Combination 5 choose... Oh, I meant to do 5 choose 2. Gosh darn it. Yeah, I gave that away. So combination 5 choose 2. This is 5 factorial over what? We start with the 2. This is 2 factorial multiplied by subtract the 2. 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. So we end up with 120 over 2 times 6, which is 12, or 10. So this is combination. 10 is combination 5 choose what? 5 choose 2. And the question is, I guess I just gave it away. What is this? So we're saying that 10 is combination 5 choose 3. Combination 5 choose 4. Combination 5 choose 5. Question, is combination 5 choose 3 the same as combination 5 choose 2? Yes. How many ways can we select two people out of five? How many ways can we select a group of two people out of five people? That can happen ten ways. How many ways can we select a group of three people out of five? That can also happen ten ways. So we just calculate. I think you just saw this. Combination five choose three. Yeah, combination 5 choose 3 is what? 5 factorial over, what do we have here? This is 3 factorial, now subtract the 2. 5 minus 3 is 2 factorial, so we have 5 factorial is 120 divided by, this is 6 times, this is 2, 6 times 2 is 12, this is 10. So do you see that we end up with the same thing? 5 choose 2 ends up with a 2 factorial and a 3 factorial in the denominator, whereas 5 choose 3 we end up with just the complete reverse. 3 factorial and 2 factorial, which still gives what? 10. Now, is combination 5 choose 4 going to be the same as combination 5 choose 1? Yes, this makes logical sense. Think about it. How many ways can you choose one person? How many ways can you choose one person out of five people? Five ways. How many ways can you choose four people out of five people? This can also happen five ways. Let's look. So combination... Combination 5 choose 4. Combination 5 choose 4 is equal to what? 5 factorial over what? 4 factorial multiplied by, subtract the 2. 5 minus 4 is 1 factorial. So we end up with 120 divided by 24 times 1, which is 24. 120 divided by 24 is 5. So you see, these are the same. And then question, how many ways can you choose a group of 5 people? How many ways can you choose a group of 5 people out of 5? How many ways can you choose five people out of five? One way, okay? So we have combination five choose five. Makes sense. You can choose five people out of five one way. So this is five factorial over. This starts here. Five factorial subtract the two is zero factorial. We end up with what? 120 over. Remember, zero factorial is one. So we have 120 multiplied by one, which is 120. 120 divided by 120 is one. So notice... Combination 5 choose 0, combination 5 choose 1, combination 5 choose 2, combination 5 choose 3, 4, and 5. What do you think this row is? If you said combination, yes. This is combination 4 choose 0. This is combination 4 choose 1. This is combination 4 choose 2. This is combination 4 choose 3. And combination what? 4 choose 4. Question, is permutation and combination coming back into the realm of simplification of our polynomials. For instance, x plus y. If I told you this, 
at the beginning of simplification, x plus y to the third power, what helps us, what helps us simplify this problem? Permutation and combination. Yes, it is here. And also, will Pascal's triangle, will Pascal's triangle help you simplify x plus y to the third? Yes. Will Pascal's triangle also help you find values of combination formulas? Yes, if you get lazy and you don't want to use the formula, mathematicians are lazy people, guys. We like laziness. If we know a trick, we use the trick. So if combination 5 choose 2, I don't feel like calculating this today. Where can I look in Pascal's triangle if I count from 0? 0, 1, 2. So counting from 0, I can find the value of combination 5 choose 2 without even using the formula. Look. Can we find the value of combination 6 choose 3? Yes, we can. Do the next row. So we have 1. 5 plus 1 is 6. 10 plus 5 is 15. 10 plus 10 is 20. 10 plus 5 is 15. 5 plus 1 is 6. And we have a 1 on the end. And this is combination 6 choose 0. Combination 6 choose 1. Combination 6 choose 2. Combination 6 choose 3. There's our answer. So what is the combination 6 choose 3 equal to? Combination 6 choose 3 is equal to 20. Check it out. If you use the formula, you can verify it. Combination 6 choose 3 is what? 6 factorial over, start with what? 3, which is 3 factorial, multiplied by subtract the 2. 6 minus 3 is 3. So we get 3 factorial, 3 factorial. 6 factorial is 720. Divided by 3 factorial is 6. 3 factorial is 6. So we get 6 times 6, which is 36. 720 divided by 36 is 20. So notice, if we don't want to use the combination formula, we can look in Pascal's triangle and find the answer. More fascinating stuff. This thing will blow your mind. I want you to notice this. What is this? So pay close attention to this. Very interesting stuff here. This triangle does all kinds of stuff. What is 1 equal to? 1 is equal to 1. Now add these. What's 1 plus 1? 1 plus 1 is 2. Next one. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. What is 1 plus 3? 1 plus 3, we're adding the rows. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 3 is 7, plus 3 is what? 8. What is this? 1 plus 4 is 5, plus 6 is 11, plus 4 is 15, plus 1 is 16. What is this? This is equal to what? 2 to the 0 power, 2 to the 1st power, 2 squared, 2 cubed, 16 is 2 to the 4th. What is the next row? If we add all these numbers, if we add all these numbers, what do we get? We get 32. And what is 32? 2 to the 5th power. So if we add the rows or add the numbers in each row, we get powers of 2. This is very important for concepts of how many numbers can exist within a set. Very, very important information. Can be saved a lot, a lot of time can be saved here. Not in this class, but in other classes, you can save time on the powers of 2. Now, and I'm not going to get into where that saves us time, but let's look at something else. This is also interesting. Question. Question. This is, this is cool. I thought this was this, this, this just was the tip of the iceberg, and this is not even everything that's in this triangle. What's 11 to the 0 power? 11 to the 0 power is 1. What is 11 to the 1st power? 11 to the 1st power is 1, 1. What is 11 squared? 11 squared is 121. Look at this. Look at this. What is 11 to the third? What is 11 to the third? 11 to the third is right here in Pascal's triangle. What is it? 1, 3, 3, 1. What is 11 to the fourth power? 11 to the fourth power is what? It's the fourth row. I'm sorry, the fifth row technically. So 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and so we even see powers 11, and that concludes this video. Good luck on your homework, guys.